Good morning, Dara. Hi, Alex. Wakey uppy uppy. Poppy. <laughs> I'll take mine black, thanks. Listen, I just wanted to catch up with you for a little bit. Uh, your show with Chris has started airing this last Sunday night. And I have to tell you, you know, when we're in the moment of taping, you know, I'm worried about so many things. I knew that there was a lot of really super duper valuable information, but this show not only was chock full of great stuff, it was just an absolute delight to have you there on set and then Chris with us because of the internet. It was great. Isn't, you know, technology is amazing. When we were working on the book, um, this last time around, um, we did pretty much everything over the internet, back and forth, sending emails, sending photos. Um, now we are both set up with this kind of a, an arrangement so that we telephone each other. And as we work on future projects, we can actually see each other and show each other, what do you think of this fabric? And what do you think of this particular set? Or no, I think you need to move that over there. Technology is just amazing. That's right. And because Chris it lives in the UK. So um, so in case you haven't seen the show yet, it's about 1930s quilts. And of course, my beloved sunbonnet, Sue, which I have fallen in love with. I but know. Who would have thunk it? I know. Well, who would have thunk that you knew so much about 1930s quilts? I want to tell everybody that, well, we sit on the show too, that we hang out. We're good buddies. And so I didn't know you knew all this stuff. Well, I started out as a quilt collector. Um, I didn't sew as a young person. I, I actually did not learn to sew until I learned to quilt. But I was interested in quilts long before that. And um, when I first started collecting quilts, the quilts of the 1930s were not particularly sought after. But um, as time went on, they became more and more collectible. Um, I wish now that I had bought some of the quilts that I saw um, when I could have afforded them. But um, there's a lot of history involved. And since it was collecting in history that initially drew me to quilts, um, I guess it was kind of a natural progression that it would be um, 1930s quilts would kind of come onto my radar. And to be really honest, I've got to, got to give a little shout out to two wonderful quilt historians. Um, I rely quite a bit on research that they have done in preparing for the show. And, um, so, and I actually have little visuals here to share with you. Um, one of the one of my favorite resources as far as quilt history is concerned is Clues in the Calico, a book by Barbara Brackman, um, a quilt maker and quilt historian from, I believe she lives in Kansas. And um, I'm not even certain this book is still in print. My copy is literally falling apart. I have used it so much over the years. But if you go on, um, you go to your search engine and enter Barbara Brackman's name, um, you will come up with her website, go on there, and just about anything you want to know about quilts from any era. She is a virtual treasure chest. And I want to say that she also has a newsletter that I get in my inbox periodically. Uh, I I first met her way back in Point Bonita, and she is simply amazing, yeah. her knowledge. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, she's always my first go-to whenever I want to do any kind of research because I collected. Um, she had all the information I could look and see if there were these kinds of fabrics, if it was that type mm -hmm. of pattern. Um, these are the quilting motifs that were used. She is, she's fantastic. Um, as far as the quilts of the 30s specifically, um, Mary Kay Waldvogel, um, who is a quilt maker and historian from Tennessee, um, has done a lot of research on quilts of the 30s. This is the book that I relied on quite a bit um, in preparing for the show. It's called Soft Covers for Hard Times, um, Quilt Making in the Great Depression. And um, beautiful book, great history, wonderful photographs too. It's a real, this book is a real visual delight. So shout out to both Barbara and Mary Kay and thanking them um, a little, a, a little behind, the, uh, behind the clock here, but thank you very much for providing such great information for quilt makers or actually anyone who wants to learn about the quilts of the past. Now we mentioned on the show, well let's just say that the show is about the history and 1930s and all that, but the how-to demo with Sun, Bonnet, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I wouldn't have guessed that one, Dara. Yeah, it was kind of an unusual choice and I think we mentioned on the show that we sort of landed on Sun, Bonnet, Sue. Um, with all of us, uh, Alex, I know over the years, you and I and a number of other quilters, Chris, um, have taught on quilting cruises together. 
And we were looking at, Chris and I wanted to do a book together. We were looking at the quilts that we had available from the cruises. And, um, you know, we, we kind of were thinking. Oh, there's my phone. John, can you get it? He'll get it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe it's a dare. Oh, you know they're going to Las Vegas this weekend to watch St. Mary's play. Well, and speaking of St. Mary's, I've got something for you. Okay. Since it is the beginning of March Madness, yeah. I did have to share, <laughs> share with March Sue. Great. Uh, we are huge March Madness, or huge college basketball fans in this in this house, and um, things kind of come to a, grind to a halt in the month of March. Month of March, and um, one of my favorite things is to save sort of all of that grunt work that goes with quilting, things like sewing down bindings and stuff. Right. Last year during March Madness, I sewed all of the bindings on all of the quilts that are in the book. So. Oh, great. Okay, so let's get back to the cruises. Okay, going back to the cruises, um, you, as you well know, um, you're sort of limited in what you can teach on a quilting cruise. There are certain parameters. Um, a lot of times we don't have sewing machines. Or if we do, we have to share them with, with other classes. It's so cramped, too, sometimes. It, it, it's cramped, yeah. And so we have to look for things that we can teach that you can do by hand or that are easy, sort of down and dirty with fusibles. or um, And also something that's going to be a, a souvenir of the trip. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I have one, actually, I want to share with you. This was a little quilt that um, oh. I did for a cruise that we were we were on. You right. and I, Chris also was on this cruise with Hawaiian Islands. Um, it's called Aloha Baby. And you can see um, simple, simple design, easy to finish, um, fusible, um, a little bit of embellishment to sort of liven it up a little bit, but the kind of thing that you can accomplish fairly easily. Well, <laughs> Chris kind of hatched on this idea of, well, let's see, we're going to Scandinavia. Let's try Sunbonnet Sue skiing. <laughs> We're on a quilting cruise. Let's put Sunbonnet Sue on a cruise ship. And I said, Chris, that's our book. And that's kind of how she happened. Chris well, thought I was crazy, but. Well, I, you know, I have to tell you, when you told us, you was kind of like, okay, you aren't going to believe what we're doing here. But the truth of it is, the book is adorable. And it's only been out now like about, what, three weeks? Yeah, it came out about three weeks ago, and um, the response has been amazing. Um, you know, again, who would have thought Sunbonnet Sue? But, you know, she is such an icon, mm -hmm. and taking her and kind of putting her into the modern day, obviously that's something that is appealing. And um, I, I I think we mentioned on the show, but I would like to kind of say, sure. uh, you know, and some others who may be watching uh, may know that I make my living as a quilt book editor. And when Chris and I wrote this book, our book actually came in 16 pages too long. Yikes. So we had to do something. And um, we originally planned to have two large sampler quilts in the book. And those quilts originally, unfortunately, had to be cut out. But again, due to the wonderful benefits of technology, um, Martingale, who's our publisher, decided to include um, photographs of those two large quilts in the book, their samplers, four seasons, 12 months, and include a link so that anyone who purchases the book can go online and get the instructions to make the two larger quilts. Well, talk about purchasing the books. You guys are set up to sell them if a quilt shop hasn't gotten them in yet or they've run out. Explain that because I think what you and Chris came up with is super clever. Yeah, what, you know, our first advice is always go to your local quilt shop. And if they don't have it yet, you know, certainly ask for it. But if you can't wait, um, you can go to Chris's website, and that is uh, www.christineporterquilts.com. Right. And um, on her website, there is a link to purchase the book. And the way that we've set it up, since we are internationally connected, <laughs> um, there is a link to purchase the book. You can either purchase it um, and have it shipped if you're overseas, from the UK, and there is information on the cost and shipping, or through her website, you can order it to be shipped here in the US, and I will ship them from here, and it's got the information for that shipping. That summit's around the corner. We right. talked about that on the show. It's our secret getaway with Joan Wolf from Not So Secret. Now, do you know what you're going to be working on this year? Um, I have a couple of things up my sleeve. Um, first of all, I you and I, as you know, are working on a special project. There will probably be some, <laughs> some, 
There'll probably be some sewing involved with yeah. that project. And also, um, happy news for us, Chris and I have just signed a contract to do a second book. Um, this one will not be about Sue, but um, we can promise that it will be something just as fun. Well, I got to tell you that people are loving the show. I loved it. It started airing this last Sunday night, and it will be up for a couple weeks as the hot show. And for you at home, it I would really recommend that if you're not on board, you get on board. This is a really fun show to start with. And so, Dara, I want to thank you for being our technological first one out of the barrel. Oh, <laughs> can you see who's over here? Come here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the co your cooperation. And i got to tell everybody, the first call this morning didn't work out. So Dara has been a really good egg on this whole thing. Hey, that's what friends are for. Yeah. Hey, and have fun in Florida with Brooks, okay? We will. Thanks a lot, Alex. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.